water or tea? Is that it? Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, might I compliment you on your very uh, prompt and efficient service? <laughs> yes, three shillings, four and three, six and four. That's um, eight and ten altogether. Eight and ten? Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't make it any littler. It's one of them funny weeks where there's nothing off and out. Mm, eight and ten. Do those two numbers fascinate you? Uh, oh, no, no. I was just wondering if, if perhaps till approximately late afternoon on Wednesday I could uh, strap up. No. I'll oh, go on. It's only eight and ten. I've had strict instructions. No credit to them on the list. What list? A list starting with your name. Ogden H, followed by Ogden S. Yeah, and I bet you constituted it. Yeah, and I bet you'd lose your brass hats, of course, if you had any. Eight and ten of that little lot goes back on that shelf. You don't like me, do you? Never have. Right, well, listen, the only shop in the district, you know. My credit's good enough elsewhere. Oh, yes. So All you... right, Hilda. You can take them. Oh, and now, Mrs Clegg, I didn't know you was out of hospital. Yeah, yesterday. Oh, and how are you? Oh, well, I can't grumble. It uh, wasn't as bad as they thought. It wasn't fractured after all. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, well. It's a good thing for this shop that you've come back. Under present management, it was going downhill fast. Uh, now, 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 before you start, Betty, I know I told you to watch the Tilda paid for everything, but things are different since the crash. But I can't see oh, it. Well, all they've got is the Social Security benefit coming in. Ah, but it's not much less than what he got when he was pretending to work. Maybe not. But we'll take it that it is less. For a bit, anyway. Oh, suit yourself. It's your shop. Yes, load. it is. Well, oh. look who's it, if it isn't Mrs. Caldwell. Hello, Mrs. Hello. Hey, and looking ten years younger. Oh, I wish I did, Mrs. Turpin. Oh, it's my legs more than anything. They keep going wobbly and have to lean a lot, as if I was drunk. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you will be the first time I see in the Rovers. Come on, lovey, sit down. Let's put it on. There oh, thank you very much. Ina says that I'll have to be careful of the drink at first. Well, not that I drink very much. Still, you'll be glad to be out of hospital, though, Mrs Colwell. I know I am. Oh, I am. But the, the very nicer hospitals, you do get looked after. But uh, there's always the thought. What thought? Well, there's no place like home. <laughs> oh, well, everybody's back home now. Mm. Except young Ray, of yeah. course. Oh, Ina's gone to see him today. And I wanted her to tell him that he could come to me if they let him out. Only she got very aerated. And it does make her face puff up. I should think she did get aerated. You can't look after a crit. Well, somebody like him in, in your condition. Oh, I shouldn't worry too much about young Ray. He'll get fixed up somewhere. Sorry about that. Your voice seemed to develop a life of its own. Go out and <coughs> do it again. Oh, I said I'm sorry. No, you might be able to do me a favour. A favour? Yeah. I've got a visitor. Male or female? Female. You're Linda? No, my Sandra. Sandra? Who's she? My sister's kid from Saddleworth. When I got home last night, she'd landed, scoffed a chicken leg and gone to bed. And she's either dead or in a trance, cos I can't wake her. You remember I used to wake you at any? What? You mean squeeze a looper out down his lug hole? <laughs> Thought had occurred to me. Oh. Well, you won't have to bother. Hello. Good morning, madam. Morning, Elsie. Any breakfast going? What's on the table? It'll do, for starters. Cheer up, whoever you are. It might never happen. Dave Smith was asking after you. Asking after me health? Or asking how soon I'd be back to start giving him a return on his investment in me? Well, which do you think? He's worried about his investment. Well, he hasn't got where he is to worrying about folks, Ilmers. By the way, now it's been brought up, how are you feeling? No worse. But no better? I'm not likely to, am I, in this place? Well, did you walk in again? <laughs> Banned. Ever since I did be swallow dive, as soon as my feet touched floor. 
You're last in hospital, you know. So I hear. Still, it's only right. And what's right about it? Well, if I hadn't organised a grand tour of all byways, we'd have been stopped by police, wouldn't we? And then there'd never have been a pile-up. Yes, and if pigs could fly, there wouldn't be as much baiting about. You don't have to blame yourself for crash, but we're just due for it. It was our turn to get shaken up. Let's just be thankful that we were let off so lightly, apart from that poor driver. It's not true what they say about you, is it? What do they say about me? That you're an old misery guts. Really, you're a ray of sunshine. That's better, lad. Much better. Here, you'd better put this on. If Stan Ogden comes in and sees you like that, his eyeballs will catch fire. And there might be one or two others who'll leap at you and all. Who's Stan Ogden? Well, a sort of local curiosity. Young? Forty-ish. Old. You won't think so one day. You don't look forty-odd, though you are. I do talk to me mother, you know. Mm. Well, talking to mothers, does she know you're here? It was her idea I came. Oh, has she any more bright ideas like that? Better stop. Oh, well, you can forget that for a start, because I've done my share of giving food and shelter to passing strangers. She's gone into hospital. Who have they? It's nothing serious, is it? She calls it a woman's complaint. She talks like that to me. So? So what? So you're big enough to look after yourself? I know. So why did she send you then? Because she's sure I can't look after myself. Anyway, I fancied it. Saddleworth isn't the most marvellous place you can live in. Yeah, well, this isn't exactly the Costa del Sol, either. Yeah, but at least the talent will be new, won't it? Talent? The eligible males. There isn't any love, otherwise I'd have snapped it up long ago. Talking of males... What about your big brother? If Faye thinks you can't look after yourself, what's she done with him? Stuck him home? Home for lost dogs? Last scene, he was mopping up a bottle of milk he'd spilt, his shirt lap was hanging out, and he was eating a vanilla. I just turned and ran. Sounds like a fair description of Bernard. Tell you what, Elsie. You don't mind me calling you Elsie, only I find the auntie hard to say. Anyway, as a word, I think it's just about had it. Well, I'm not particularly mad about it myself, especially applied to me. You were saying? That I could kill another piece of toast. I'll tell you something. What? I know you weren't 40, even if I was blind. How? <laughs> By your appetite. You talked about me? Yes. Can't be complimentary if you've got a whisper. It isn't. You know what? For what? I don't much care. He seems to have become a fixture. You're telling me. Oh, it's difficult, isn't it? It's impossible. There's <coughs> another problem, too. What is he going to stop when he comes out of hospital? You're not suggesting that I open my doors to Ray as well? Well, could you feel any movement, then? Nothing. And then? Nothing. Just like the last time and the time before that. Well, it's early days yet. That's like a favourite reassuring saying of yours, isn't it, Doctor? Is it? Yes, it is. Well, I'll watch it in future. Thank you, sister. Now... How about a spin in a wheelchair? I prefer a spin in my own van with me driving it. Well, we don't allow vans inside the hospital. It's one of those silly rules. I think it would be better if Sister arranged to get you a chair. Yes? <laughs> be a change from lying in bed. And now I'd like to see Mr. Neville, Sister, please. Good morning, Mr. Neville. How are you? Some change. It's surprising how you can move about in one. Once you get the hang of it... I don't want to get the hang of it. I want to move about on my own two pins, not in a wheelchair. You will do, if you only have patience. 
You know what that's another way of saying, don't you? What? It's early days yet. Any more for the Skylark? Well, now, how do you expect me to get aboard that thing? You've just slipped the decks for action. Now, the main thing you've got to hang on round my neck, you see, to take a good grip. I'm 13 stone. I've had them in there, 20 stone. Don't let that worry you. Just hang on tight. Are you ready? Take a grip there. OK, up you come. OK. Oh, just bring it back. All right, pull me out. All, all right, right, all right. Don't panic. I'll just put these in the stirrups. There you are. How was that? Come here. Oh, oh, no. Ooh. Aye, heck, the summers didn't do so badly out at crash. Just look at you all. <coughs> Wouldn't be as well off on your holidays. We're not our fault if we're the worst injured. Worst injured? Ken Barlow there and Dickie Fleming were hardly scratched and they've been behaving as though they've been fighting for life. Oh, we're what's known as convalescent. Exactly. Yes, but your wives aren't exactly convalescent either. They're rushed off their feet. Especially yours, Ken Barlow. Well, it's just the way of things, Mrs. Sharpwood. Always has been. Always will be. I know, and it's one of the big disappointments of my life that I've not been able to change it. You better come and sit down and all. Same again, gents. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Turpin? Yeah. Same again, please. No. You're refusing the service? Hey, that's very serious. It's as serious as striking a shop steward, I shouldn't wonder. I'm not refusing to serve these pair, but you came in here half an hour ago for some pies, presumably for you and Audrey's dinner. So get off home with them. Well, you're not going to let her treat me like this, are you, fella? If they interfere, I shall refuse to serve them. Oh, she has got a point, Dickie. Oh, definitely. Well, fine flaming makes you two are, aren't you? Mm, right, two pints. Ah, two pints. No, 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 my turn, Sandy, my turn. Oh, 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 I'd hello. forgotten about hello, that. Hello, what's that love letter? Um, <laughs> good call it. I want to destroy it. It's the law of the world, I'll tell you. Love letters, bonus money, and dirty pictures can't be kept secret from the wife. Yeah. Right, two pints of mix. Ah. Hope it chokes you. No chance. In fact, it'll build us up. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Could I hear that thing halfway down Rosamond Street? What were you saying? Will it do cleaning up? I've done. Yes, it will. My mum said you lived in a dump, but it's not all that bad, really. I'll tell you something. What? You're very honest. Oh, I am believing it. One of few things I remember my dad telling me before he died. Never bottle folk up, Sandra, he said. Tell them what you think and be damned to them. Mm. Well, it's not easy as that. I've tried it and I know. Oh, I find it easy enough. There's one little thing we haven't mentioned. What's that? Work. I mean, you do, don't you? I mean, you're not just a lady of leisure. Oh, I'm a hairdresser. Sorry, hairstylist. Oh, I see. You might be hairstyling today. Well, I thought, if I'm coming to live with Elsie, I might as well make a clean break of it and pack my job in as well. And you've packed it in? Yeah. That has a terribly familiar ring about it. Oh, I'll get another job. I'm very good at hairstyling, you see. Flipping marvellous, isn't it? What is? The confidence of the young and your complexion. My mother doesn't call it confidence, she calls it stupidity. Yeah, until I know you better, I'll call it confidence. Do you hear a bang then? No. So tidy still, that's not unusual. Doors are always open and shutting in this street. Oh, oh what? flipping neck. Oh, this is the right house then, loyalty house. See, sis. Where you going with that bike? I'm taking it through to the backyard. It, it won't be at way there, will it? Uh, I shall set through that way, I have to guess. Not partic, not partic. What's the matter? What do you mean, like what? I don't know, it's just your mouth, it looks a bit silly. <laughs> Sorry. I've got tripe, do you want tripe? Great, great, great. 
Uh, is this jacket worth keeping? Uh, yes, I think it is. Oh. All right, well, I'll put it back in the wardrobe then. Oh, answer that, will you, love? I've not come empty-handed. I see him. Do you always travel a barometer? Oh, weather's his big passion. He mm. buys five daily newspapers sometimes so he can work out the average forecast. It's as well to know what to expect, especially if you're a cyclist. And are you a football fan as well? Is eh? he yet? Well, what's a scare for? Oh, he goes on plenty of football excursions, but just for the ride. It's a cheap way of getting about the country. It's a flaming dangerous way, you know. There you are. There's my contribution to the household. Could you spare it? Stick in plasters. He gets through more of them than eight cracked ribs. You'll understand why when you've had him with you a bit. No, I haven't said I'm going to have him with me yet. Uh, where can I put this stuff then? Back in your saddlebag, I would suggest. You don't want me to stop then? No, I don't. I've got quite enough with her. Ta-ra, Bernard. Well, it's funny how one sister can be so much wrong about another sister. Oh, so what are you blathering about? Watch him, Elsie. He's not as simple as he looks. Well, a number of times my mother said, if all happens to me, you go straight to our Elsie. She'll look after Just you. Just listen to the big liar. If she said it once, she said it scores of times. But there's nothing wrong with your mother. She's in dock, isn't she? Put your things in the front room. There's a spare bed in there. I shall make it up later. Oh, thanks very much, Auntie Elsie. Thanks. Oh, I said, do you mind if I knock a nail in the wall for my barometer, like? No, feel completely free. You've been conned, you know. Yeah, for the second time today. Oh, thank goodness today's over. Yep. Where's Uncle Albert? Not that I'm interested. Mm. Last scene, discussing with some crony whether or not to buy a few bobs with a dark at some cinema. Oh, I hope it's a treble feature. <laughs> Me too. We're not going to get rid of him, are we? Not ever. Uh, of course we shall. As soon as he's able to peel his own bananas. He seems to fill the entire flat. Every time he turns round, he's there. He's really eating. Yeah, well, he's not here now, so let's just sit back and enjoy an hour's telly. That's what I love about you. You're chock full of romantic ideas on how to while away an evening. What are you watching? Where the heck did you spring from? I thought you'd gone to the pictures. Ah, well, I discussed it with Fred Green and we decided there was something better on telly. Like what? I'm not that rubbish for a start. Possibly what one of the last men to take part in a cavalry charge with the British Army was ex-Sergeant Reginald Trippier. Sergeant Trippier, who's now 81 and a little hard of hearing. That's right, isn't it, Sergeant? You're 81. You're 81. Yes. Now, uh, tell us about the part the cavalry played during those memorable years when the horse was to the fore in many a battle. You know, you can get a fair speed up in one of these. Every yeah. bit of four miles an hour. Pointing downhill with the wind behind you, you'll be away. Better you than me, mate. Oh, come on out of it, Dickie. It's comfortable. I said get out of it. All right, keep your hair on. Sight of a wheelchair upset you then, Audrey? No, why should it? Just didn't want him breaking it. Yeah. Well now, Dickie, thumped anybody interesting lately? Besides me, I mean. I don't make a habit of thumping folk, right? Still, that's one of the hazards of having a lovely wife, isn't it? You've always got to be defending her honour. I've had some news. Good, I hope. I could do with some. <sighs> About Dave Smith. I heard he was asking after me. Well, he put a fella in your yard today, just, just for the time being. He doesn't waste much flaming time. Well, it's only temporary, Ray. You can see his point of view. Can you, Dickie? But that's funny, because I can't. Still, I'm in this bed. I mean, I'm not wandering about on two long, thin legs. We were wondering if you'd given any thought to where you're going to stop when you get out of here. What's wrong with where I was living before, at Mrs Caldwell's? Well, there's a snag, Ray. You see, it's going to be a long time before she feels up to having lodgers again. So I move in with somebody else. What's your worry? I haven't one. Just as long as you know the position. 
Yes, well, I do know now. Thanks. You better be going, Audrey. The bus service isn't too hot round here. Yeah. Well, come again, Ray. You do that. Tra. Tra. Hey! If you miss your bus, you can always nip back and borrow a ride in my wheelchair. Tell me, Mr. Trippier, there must have been a very strong bond between you and your horse. I mean, facing death together as you did. In fact, did, did your horse ever actually save your life in action? I don't mean that occasion you fell off your horse near Mons, uh, knocking yourself out and, and missing what was probably your regiment's most bloody encounter. No, I, I'm talking about the time when you hey, and your men... Hey, what are you doing? What are you switching over oh, for? Oh, you're not watching it. Of course I'm watching it. You were asleep. I was watching it. Bit of a licker of a chap my age. Right, ain't allowed to watch right. a bit of... All right, all right. When he took. All right. All right, Uncle Albert. Point taken. You took a great pride in your mounts, of course, didn't you? Cared for them better than the wife, I dare say. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, uh, tell me, Mr. Trippier, uh, how much of your day was spent grooming, for instance? Uh, and was special care taken over this before a battle? Well, of course I'll ask Cyril, Mrs. Sharples. He's sure to be able to find out something about Ray's sister. Well, I hope so. Blood's thicker than water. <laughs> Maybe young Janice will come up trumps if she knows Ray needs her. How, uh, how was he? Same. Which is never a very heartening thing to say about folk in hospital. Ah, no. Oh, did you find anything from a jumble sale I was on about? Oh, I think Betty has. Oh, uh, good. Hang on. Yes, well, wherever you are, this shop's been closed for hours. Oh, no, it was open. Are you doubting my word, young fella? Well, all I'm saying is when I tried that door, it opened. Oh, I see you're one of them, are you? Smart, Alec. Bit heavy. I think she must have put a pair of Cyril's size 11s in. <laughs> oh, manage. Ooh, uh, I've told uh, him you're shut, but he doesn't seem to understand English. Uh, well, I'm stopping with Mrs. Tanner, you know, down the street. Uh, I'm a nephew. Oh. And when I look in a cupboard, what do I find? Oh, what do you find? No hot chocolate. And I don't think I've ever been to bed without a cup of hot chocolate. Oh, well, I wouldn't want you missing it tonight on my conscience. There, two and three. Thank you. Thanks very much. Sweet dreams. Oh, you're Elsie Tanner's nephew. Yeah, that's right. You stopping long? I could be. Oh, well, in that case, you'd better find out what sort of folk your new neighbours are, hadn't you? How do I do that? We're carrying that home for me. You had her. You well, I still say you didn't do a proper job of it. What with Mr Walker being out of action and Mrs Walker having to look after him, I mean, honestly, you could have made a bit more effort. I could have written my name in the dust in that snug after you'd gone this morning. Well, what about me being busy looking after my stand? What about that, then, eh? A uh, fat lot of looking after he needs. He's propped that bar up since breakfast this morning, or so it seems. <laughs> You know, I wish you'd at least spring to your own defence. I mean, I don't expect you to spring to mine. Look, it's a bit difficult as far as she's concerned. How'd you make that out? Well, I mean, she's in charge here, you see. I can't upset her. Not till I'm strong enough to walk down to the flying horse. It's our 26th wedding anniversary in a fortnight. <sighs> Fancy. And for 26 years, I've played second fiddle to a pint glass. Well, you might have done worse. Not so flaming much worse. You might have wed Crippin. Good evening. Too. Oh, and uh, who's this then? Well, this is my niece, Sandra Butler. This is Hilda Ogden. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Stan Ogden. My husband. I've already heard about you. You were, wouldn't you? <laughs> What's your poison? Scotch. That's if you don't mind. No, no, no. That's what those fellas are here for. You know, to buy drinks for gorgeous, attractive uh, gin and tonic, Elsie. Oh, I don't mind, Stanley. Right. Uh, Betty! You, you big lump. We can't afford to go buying shots for Elsie Tanner and all her relatives. Sure up. That's another thing I've played second fiddle to more than once. A pretty face. Sure up, will you, yeah. Betty? A, a pint, a whiskey and a gin and tonic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and half a mile for our kid. It's a bit dead in here. Oh, it'll liven up later on. I hope it does. Oh, aye, and Alsatian comes in and plays a mouth organ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are those two? You are. Oh, Ken? Wait a minute. Can I introduce my niece, Sandra Butler? This is Ken Barlow, Dickie Fleming, two neighbours, neighbours of mine. Hello. I do. Right, well, we'll, uh, we'll see you then. Mm. 
<clears throat> That's much better. They're both married. So? You were saying? Saying? About Ray, if you can take your eyes off her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think it'd be better off where he is till he's fully recovered. You try telling Audrey that. She reckons we've all let him down. Yeah, have you asked everywhere where he could possibly stay? Well, everywhere except Stan and Hilda. I didn't think there was much point. No, no. Look, Dick, I know it can't be very nice for an active chat like Ray to stay in hospital, but it uh, can't be for much longer, can it? And strictly between you and me, I wouldn't mind spending a couple of weeks under the care of a new bile nurse. Yeah. Some of Ray's aren't bad at all. Oh, they are then. I mean, better off than we are, aren't they? I'm told you'd like a word with me. Anything wrong? Well, that's it, Doctor. I, I don't know, do I? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not, not a sure hero, I... Doctor. I, I'm even scared of being a blood donor, but given enough time, I can manage to pluck up courage to face the facts. To face what sort of facts? Just how bad I am. You really want to know? Yes. For the reason you're paralyzed, Mr. Langton, is because you're suffering from a condition called transverse myelitis. Great. Transverse myelitis. But how soon do I get unparalyzed? I'm afraid the answer to that is rather more complicated. 